Oh, hello. Since they were first introduced, there have been 175 total secret layers, which is so many, in fact, that last Christmas, I was able to make a Yule log of nothing more than me sitting by the fire while I read each and every secret layer. There's too many secret layers! <laughs> Content. But this year has only seen 25 secret layers. And as amazing as it sounds, there only having been 25 secret layers in 2023 may actually be an indicator that Wizards of the Coast is slowing down. With the recent Angels Commander deck secret layer, which, by the way, you can watch me unbox and analyze here, perhaps being one of the final secret layers of the year, where we, as both corporation and consumer, can properly punctuate the year with restraint, with calm, with self-reflection, and with, and with, with, <gasps> no secret layer alert, no secret layer alert, no secret layer alert, no secret layer alert. Ah, we've got over half a dozen new secret layers. Oh my gods. Was 25 secret layers just for the first half of the year? Will this year achieve the mythical 52 secret layers, meaning that we got essentially one per week? And are any or all of these new secret layers worth it to buy? Let's take a look. But first, new Tellarian Community College giveaway alert! This Friday the 15th at 3 p.m. Pacific, I'll be giving away these Wilds of Eldraine collector booster boxes as well as a modest selection of some other collector booster boxes that I've had lying around quite literally, my office. And I'll be giving it all away on my next Whatnot stream. Oh, I'll also be giving away each and every one of you $15 to spend on whatever you want on Whatnot if you use my special invite code at www.whatnot.com forward slash Tellarian College to sign up for an account. Whatnot is just if eBay and Twitch had a baby. You can use my $15 credit to go buy something off any live stream on the site, whether it's $15 of Magic the Gathering packs or singles or towards a larger product purchase or any of the awesome non-magic items being sold on Whatnot. It's $15 and it's from me to you when you use my invite code. Or don't spend anything at all. Just show up to my stream, hang out, and maybe walk away with one of these awesome collector booster boxes for free. Free is good, right? So is the free $15 credit, but whatever. You do you, and whatever you love, and whatever magic stuff you want to buy, you can find it on Whatnot. Oh, 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 wacky, oh. So I'll see you this Friday the 15th at 3 p.m. Pacific and thank you Whatnot for sponsoring this video. Our first secret layer is done in the style of Tomo 77's apocalyptic art, which fits right in with black and red themes of disruption, removal, and making our creatures hasty to punish the path we've cleared. Previously only reprinted in 7th edition and as a list card, Oppression is now being reprinted here, uh, as well as also in Wilds of Eldraine as an enchanting tail card. All right, well, that's nice. And Oppression is nice. Wait, don't quote me on that. What I mean is, Oppression is a popular commander card for the 99 for a reason, as it thrives in graveyard decks that can actually utilize the ability to pitch key cards into the yard, all while punishing everyone else at the table, especially anyone who might try and storm off. Less exciting to see reprinted here is a braid, which sees some play in Popper as well as Pioneer sideboards, but not enough that I think anyone is going to be especially excited to try and pick up a playset of this art style for their decks. It's also not something I expect to see a lot of people putting in their commander decks, and overall those who might be most excited for this premium printing of a 10 cent card are cube players as it is an all-star of that format. The real spotlight card of this secret layer is Mass Hysteria, a card completely 
completely absent in non-commander formats, despite granting all creatures haste for a single mana. But that ability is huge in Commander, as is the fact that this is the first time the card has been reprinted, meaning it's the highest value of the batch. Finally, we have the classic removal spell of Terminate, which is reliable instant speed removal for only two mana. Terminate has declined in use somewhat since Regeneration has been replaced by Indestructible, but you'll still see Commander lists that run it. Terminate also sees some modern play and is a great card in cube. Looking at the overall value, I really wish a braid had not been on this list at all, and that there had been a fifth card, as is expected in most secret layers. The non-foil value is 14 bucks and change. Not a good deal for $29.99. You're getting a little bit extra bang for your buck if you buy the foil version, but that's mostly just because of mass hysteria's inflated foil price. And I'm gonna say the grade here is a D and a C. Not off to a strong start, are we? Our next layer is a very 80s collection. Hey kids, do you remember VHS tapes? Do you remember video rental stores? I mean, at this point, I might as well be asking if you even remember what a DVD is. Stop calling me a boomer, and remember to be kind and rewind. That saying alone is probably the only reason why rewind was included here. A common card that even Popper has largely abandoned. And I can think of no better example of something that used to be cool, but is now outdated and unused. It'll cost you 15 cents in non foil and 30 cents in foil, and there's a reason for it. Let's fast forward to something more interesting, shall we? Food Chain! Ah, now there's a card with big nostalgia vibes for me, as it was a source of infinite mana and legacy when combined with Mist Hollow Griffin or Eternal Scourge. I had a Food Chain deck back in the day, and it was before it became popular. I'm not a magic boomer, I'm a magic hipster. Food Chain is actually now seeing a lot of love in Commander, where decks will both seek to emulate its old legacy days infinite mana, but will also run it in fair creature your commander strategies that don't need to go infinite. This is a great card with a unique effect and a solid inclusion for secret layers. Rampant Growth, on the other hand, is a great example of the perfect fifth card for secret layers, because while it doesn't have a high price tag, it is a great card and an auto-include in any deck with green just about, from mono to five color, which means every commander player is going to have a home for it. Too bad this secret layer only has four cards again. Are we going down from five cards to four? Last but certainly not least, we have a card that should have been in both Commander Masters, as well as the Commander Masters Sliver Premium Precon, the last sliver. But why include it in those products when you can put it in a secret layer to sell as a single directly to customers? This card goes in exactly one deck, but it's a beloved deck, even by me. And that's Slivers. Do you play Slivers? If so, do you have the last sliver? If no, then scooping up this secret layer is a great deal, because the last sliver is selling for about 40 bucks each alone. Pretty much that value in foil or not. On foil. The added inclusion of Food Chain and a Rampant Growth is great, and I could have forgiven Rewind if they'd given us a fifth card. As cynical as including the last sliver in this secret layer is, it makes this a very good value and a B-plus grade for either version of the secret layer. Again, if there had been a fifth card with Food Chain quality, then that could have pushed this into A territory. And hey, speaking of retro things, it's Magic the Baseballing. Do you remember baseball cards? No? They're like Magic the Gathering cards, only you can't actually play with them. But you can play with these, and it's the original Lorwyn 5, which actually would have been a better name for the secret layer than Magic the Baseballing, but I digress. The Lorwyn 5 used to command a much higher value than they do these days. With Chase Bellerin here only selling for 50 cents in non-foil? What did they do to Planeswalkers? That used to be the driving point of Magic the Gathering. While Jace doesn't usually justify a home and even commander, both Liliana Vess and a Johnny Gold main do. Not great cards in their own right, they often find themselves in decks that they are thematically appropriate in. A Johnny being a planeswalker whose ultimate ability is a vanilla creature in a world of creatures that have more text than text box, he pretty much sees play to put plus one plus one counters on multiple creatures, even though there are stronger spells for two and double white. Liliana's hand is Disruption is less relevant in Commander, where people are largely running her to try and tick off her ultimate ability. Chandra Nilar is another Planeswalker that you can pick up in non-foil for less than a dollar, and reading her card explains why her card is the OG of red Planeswalkers that really aren't that good. Plain, simple Garrick Wildspeaker at least has the ability to defend himself, and if he survives his first turn on the board, you can easily ramp into enormous spells with his ability to untap lands. Looking at overall value, Planeswalkers 
certainly have seen better days. Picking up all of these in non-foil is only about $13, and even if you want to bling them out in foil, you'd only have to spend $32 to get the $40 version of this secret layer. I'm gonna give this a D across the board for disappointment. Please insert generic comment that if you like this art style, then that's fine to pick it up. But just like actual baseball cards, I don't really know that these choices are ones that'll see much play. Next up, the people who name secret layers are absolutely, positively not running out of ideas for names, as we have Keep Partying Hard, Shred Harder Than You Previously Thought Possible. This is a collection of popular commanders among the more competitively minded, with Tevish Zat, Godot Bandit Lord, Jessica Thrice Reborn, and Vile Smasher the Fierce, each printed in the most illegible way imaginable. I, I mean radical way imaginable. Tevish Zat leads this all-star lineup with his ability to grind out value with a skull clamp esque ability that lets you shred your chump blockers once they no longer need to block. Despite the incredibly low price tag, Goto Bandit Lord is an incredibly powerful commander who lets you fetch up Helm of the Host to loop as many combat steps as you could possibly desire. He's been reprinted quite a few times already and only commands about 50 cents in either foil or non-foil. Jessica Thrice Reborn is another popular partner commander who was originally printed alongside her partner Dargo. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see Dargo show up as the bonus card in this secret layer, though with partners there's a lot of other options as well. This is definitely a case where I wish Jessica's will had been reprinted instead of Jessica, as she's currently only a $3 card. And it wouldn't be partner commanders without Vile Smasher, who was once considered to be one of the best partner commanders for quite some time. She's so good you could even run her as the singular commander of your deck, and even then she could be considered to be a little OP. But what isn't OP is her price tag, of only about $7 dollars in foil, and interestingly available here in non-foil for the first time ever. I don't think that's going to do much for the non-foil value of this secret layer, as it's only $6 and change in value, not counting Vile Smasher, and $21 and change for the foil version. What a disappointing assortment. When looking at partner commanders, there are so many big ticket ones you could have included here to pack this secret layer with value. Heck, the fact that it's partners could have been a great excuse to maybe make it 10 cards total. You know, five commanders with five partners. They've done 10 card secret layers before, let's go for it. But here they did not go for it and I'm gonna straight out fail this. Six bucks and change for a $30 product? Thank you, next. Next up, we get major psychedelic vibes with Buggin' Out. The borders and text boxes are melting together in this Golgari Dirt Wizard secret layer. But I suppose the bug theme is a loose theme as the first card in this layer is Eldritch Evolution, otherwise known as Natural Order at Home. Wouldn't it have been cool if this just was Natural Order? Nonetheless, Pioneer players can enjoy this in their Grease Fang decks, while Commander players will pair it with all sorts of Enter the Battlefield or Death effects to get more bang from their buck. Eldritch Evolution is indeed powerful and fun, and I am always happy to see more copies of it printed. Moving on to actual bugs, Giant Ataphage may not have a high price tag, only about 40 cents in non-foil, but Commander players do love trying to go wide with its self-copying ability. And the card does see inclusion in everything from Henzi toolbox decks to classics like Tristani tokens and everything in between. And while I'm not quite sure how Noxious Revival fits with the theme, the fact that its foil version from New Phyrexia is $80 for this uncommon means I'm happy to see it reprinted here. A key combo card for, of all things, Vintage, which probably explains that high foil price tag, Commander players also enjoy its instant speed recursion for key one ofs. Speaking of commanders, Gris the Hunger Tide may not be great in Commander, but that doesn't mean it isn't popular there nonetheless, due to its unique quality of being a creature outside of the battlefield, and a fun inclusion in the 99 as this ability gives you many reliable ways to search for it. It's great at defending itself, great at removing threats, and actually a game ender in everything from modern to legacy to, yeah, cube. Finally, Mazarek Crawl Death Priest turns every fetch land and treasure token into a major threat. Still commanding a moderate price tag despite a recent reprint in Double Masters, makes this a worthwhile inclusion in the weirdly themed layer of Buggin' Out. Unfortunately, the total value here is also on theme because it really bugs me to see only $21 in value for the $29 non-foil version. While the foil version is a whopping $118, that is again due to 80 
any of it being Noxious Revival, without whom you'd pretty much be getting your exact value of dollar. So that makes this a D in non-foil and a C in foil. Kind of a weird layer in my evaluation. Next up is an artist series and a favorite of mine, The Amazing Kev Walker. Obligatory comment that if you like this art or this art style, that may be worth it to you to buy this secret layer, just like any secret layer, but we will just be focusing on financial value as always. Fun fact, Kev Walker actually holds the record for most magic cards drawn and has produced amazing artwork for this game for decades. Here he brings us the Scourge of Ixalan Standard, Carnage Tyrant, a card that tries tried its best to explore other formats, but found only Cube. And I guess Historic on Arena, but you don't actually get these cards on Arena, or heaven forbid Magic Online, because that would just make too much sense. Carnage Tyrant was built to destroy control decks. You can't counter it, you can't target it, and you can't easily block it. But when you start with 40 life, that by itself is not too scary. And its price tag is tied largely due to it being a Cube All-Star. Faborough Elder will give you everything you want in a creature. Good stats, the ability to meaningfully attack, and the opportunity to produce a ton of mana even if you do attack. It sees moderate popularity for these reasons, but its price tag doesn't quite make it a moderate reprint. Fleshbag Marauder has seen so many printings at this point that its inclusion here is likely just as a classic favorite of Kev Walker's. Again, loving the art style can be reason enough, but Marauder is a 10 cent card. An unfortunate fact in a secret layer that only has four cards instead of five. Finally, we have It That Betrays betrays, the most valuable card reprinted in this layer. It that betrays is much easier to get onto the battlefield than many Eldrazi. And since it doesn't shuffle itself into your library if it's put into your graveyard, reanimation effects actually work on it, meaning that it's great not only in Eldrazi-themed decks, but also reanimator lists. Looking at the overall value, here we have yet another $15 non-foil layer. Gosh, that's a lot of them for this batch. And the $80 in value on the foil versions is that It That Betrays is a $72 foil from Rise of the Eldrazi. In my heart of hearts, I would just say this is a D across the board, but I feel that a lot of people would yell at me for giving an $84 foil version a D. So I'll say this is a D and C with a personal note that I really don't think the foil version's a D. I'm doing it out of imagined pressure. People saying, how can it not be uh, at least a C if it's got, because it's just, it's, it's Fleshbag Marauders a 15 cent card. Faberl Elders $3 and change, come on. Let's get some better picks here. I love Kev Walker, but I just don't really see this as an impressive lineup. And last, but certainly kind of least, we have yet another five basic lands for $30 or $40. In our last secret layer with the Mountain Goats, we got 10 basic lands for this same price. And as I've explained in detail in my updated video here, it is currently the position of Tularean Community College that five basic lands for $30 or $40 is just not worth it. And Wizards of the Coast has given us more in the past and should revise their basic lands secret layer policy. The Art may be awesome, but it would be more awesome if I got enough copies of these basics to be able to exclusively use the style in my decks. This should be anywhere between five and 10 copies of each basic for this price, and I'm standing by that. Not worth it. And again, apologies for not being able to get out and is it worth it to buy on the Angels Commander deck. You know, it goes up, it sells out, and I like time to think about these things. I gotta research this stuff, I gotta consider, and oops, it's sold out. But if you do wanna watch me unbox it and offer my analysis after the fact, you can watch that video here. Or just watch me on Whatnot this Friday the 15th at 3 p.m. Pacific when I give away all of these collector booster boxes as well as some other awesome stuff. And if you want, you can use my invite code and get a $15 credit to spend on anything on anyone's stream on Whatnot. Magic the Gathering cards or accessories or whatever you want. It's Whatnot. Just go to www.whatnot.com forward slash invite forward slash Tolarian College to get your $15 credit and See you this Friday the 15th, where we're giving away collector booster boxes to people just hanging out in stream. Thank you, Whatnot, for sponsoring this video. Next time on Shuffle Up and Play.
Today we're playing a format that we all love and decks that we love. It's I Love Our Commander Day. I'm D. I love my Rakdos Lord of Riot deck. Hi, I'm Jesse. My commander is Raf Capuchin, Ship's Mage. My name is Carmen Handy. This is Sakashima of a Thousand Faces and Tormod the Desecrator. I am playing with a deck that used to be one of my absolute favorites, Zozu the Punisher. I'm gonna tap three. I'm gonna Wheel of Fortune. I'm really regretting not playing the Soul Ring on turn one. Whoa! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> All right. You took nine damage. Yeah, to play my second land. Yes. And then cast my first spell. Listen. The bravest You did do that it. before both, uh, <laughs> they both came out. I would have done it either way. Do I look like a coward? Don't answer. The person to blame is right on the sleeve. Boom, boom. Ah, oh. There we the go. The spicy. There we go. 